Let me read here, here tonight. Amen. Near Second Samuel chapter number eleven. Second <clears throat> Samuel chapter number eleven. We know that in this chapter that um, David commits adultery with Bathsheba. And uh, we know that she says, I'm with child. And to cover his sin, he says, um, he sends for Uriah. His sin is still not covered, so he sends him out to the front of the battle. Amen. Chapter number 22 says, so uh, chapter number 11, verse 22, So the messenger went and came and shewed David all that Joab had sent him for. And the messenger said unto David, Surely the men prevailed against us and came out unto us into the field, and we were upon them even unto the entering of the gate. And the shooters shot from off the wall upon thy servants, and some of the king's servants be dead, and thy servant Uriah the Hittite is dead also. And David said unto the messenger, Thus shalt thou say, Unto Joab, let not this thing displease thee, for the sword devoureth one as well as another. Make the battle more strong against the city, and overthrow it, and encourage thou him. When the wife of Uriah heard that Uriah, her husband, was dead, she mourned for her husband. When the morning was past, David sent and fetched her to his house, and she became his wife, and bear him a son. And they lived happily ever after. Well, I, wait a minute. And when the morning was past, David sent and fetched her to his house, and she became his wife, and bare him a son, and it was great from then on. There's something I read here this morning, early this morning, that stuck out to me. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. The thing that David had done displeased the Lord. If the Lord would stand by me for a few minutes tonight, I'm just going to preach simply on, is the Lord pleased with you? Is the Lord pleased with you? Lord, help me to preach tonight, God. If it's just to one that needs it, or if it's to many, I covet that anointing, that touch, that wisdom, dear God, that only You can give. I have felt You so sweet in this service, Lord. And if men and women do not get what they need, it's not Your fault, God, because I have felt You here, Lord. And I, I pray that we have received and touched and reached and felt. And now anoint me, Thy servant, for just a few minutes as I preach to my people, God. Anoint their ears to hear, their hearts to receive. I thank You for the altar services that we have had. And I pray, God, that You would continue to move in our altar services. Thank You for them, Lord. Bless Haven of Hope abundantly. In Jesus' name I ask it. And everybody said, and everybody said, I forgot me a new hanky tonight. My wife said she's going to hide some under here for me, so when I forget one, I'll be in good shape. I want to preach for a few minutes tonight on... Is the Lord pleased with you? You know, I, I, I read this this morning. You know, sometimes, I don't know how we do it, but we do do it. I think that sometimes we forget that there is an all-seeing eye that watches us 24-7. And you know what? We get, I've seen people, we get in our ways... And, and, and we get, uh, we get to going and we get to moving and we get to doing our own thing. And I think sometimes we forget that there's a God that sees and there's a God that hears and there's a God that listens and there is a God that knows what we are doing and when we are doing it. And come on here now. And, uh, I read about David here and as I, and I read about this and I began to meditate upon this today and I began to think about David as he thought everything is okay. I've done what I'm going to do. I'm doing what I want to do. He's done committed adultery. 
And now he is not sorry for his adultery, but he has now went and tried to cover this adultery. And now he has gone so far. The man that was quoted once to be a man after God's own heart has murdered this woman's husband. Come on here now. And as he murdered this woman's husband, uh, and then the, the news comes back, and David is so cold and so calloused, amen, and, and that, he, that he, sends, he said, send a message to Joab. And tell him, don't let this thing displease you that we lost a good man. It's just one of the casualties of war. And to courage himself and to go ahead and take the city. There was no remorse. There was no sadness. There was no brokenness in his heart. Amen. And he said that when the wife of Uriah heard that Uriah was dead, that she mourned for her husband. I don't know there was a week of mourning or two weeks of mourning. But when the mourning was done, the Bible said that David went and took her for his wife. And the Bible said she bare him a son. And it looks like we're fixing to end the chapter. And David is going to sin and get away with it. And oh, there's one last sentence that tacked on the end of this chapter. And the Bible said, but the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. I want to ask you a question tonight. Is there anything in your life that's displeasing to God tonight? I want you to know God is watching you. And God is waiting on you. And God knows where you are and what you are doing. Amen. My God, He's looking at you. And maybe tonight you're saying, I'm going to do my own thing. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to live like I want to live. Ain't nobody going to tell me what to do. Ain't nobody going to tell me when to worship. Ain't nobody going to tell me how to live. Ain't nobody going to tell me what not to wear. And I'm going to tell you, I may not tell you, but there is a God in heaven. And He is watching you tonight. Amen. And He says, I want to know. I've got a question for you. Is your life pleasing to the Lord tonight? Oh, help us, God. I don't know if this will stick with you like he stuck with me, but Brother Ryan, I read this this morning. The thing that David had done displeased the Lord. Amen. Do you hear what I'm fixing to tell you? David thought he was going to go on and do his own thing. He was going to go on his own merry way. Amen. But the very next chapter and the very first verse... Hey man, we've just had a baby. Uh, I want you to know something that I don't know how long this morning went on. Uh, hey man, it was probably just a few weeks of morning. There was a custom there. Uh, hey man, about it was about seven days from what I can understand. But brother Shane, brother Bible school, he might can help with that. Uh, but from what I studied, about seven days of mourning. Uh, hey man, he hurriedly made Bathsheba to cover this pregnancy. Uh, hey man, all gonna hide this thing. Uh, and so brother Ryan for about eight months. Uh, hey, but probably wasn't that long because. It'd take a while for her to know that she was with child, so let's say six months. Uh, amen. Oh, they're just married and they're happy. Uh, and David's going to have a new son and the kingdom rejoices. Uh, amen. Oh, they this great David took uh, and he's going to raise your eyes. Little, oh, David's a hero. Uh, amen. Oh, look at this. Ain't he great? Uh, amen. Oh, there was somebody upstairs. Uh, there was a man sitting on a great white throne uh, with a scowl on his face. Uh, and he said, they may think you're a hero, David. Uh, and they may think, oh, how how good this is uh, that David's going to raise this little orphan child uh, who's daddy but I know better David uh, he said my God and the thing displeased the Lord uh, even in the very first verse uh, the very first verse of the next chapter said uh, and the Lord sent Nathan unto David uh, God sent a preacher down there uh, I wish I didn't have to preach this tonight uh, but I feel like God said you got to tell somebody uh, that your ways are not pleasing to the Lord uh, the Bible said when a man's ways please the Lord. He make of even his enemies to be at peace with him. Amen. Now that's the things we can do to please God tonight. Amen. Oh, the preacher said, hey, I've got something to tell you, David. You may think it's all okay, but I've got a little story to tell. Amen. He begins to tell him, Amen, there were two men in the city, one rich and the other poor. The rich man had exceeded many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing save one little lamb. Oh, he nursed that lamb. Notice how God sticks a hook in David's jaw. Amen. Because he knew that David was a shepherd. And he knew that David loved sheep, eh, Carlene? And so he takes to him. He doesn't tell him a story about war, even though David was a man of war. But he gets down to the old strings of his heart. And he begins to play a little music on David's heart strings about a story about a little lamb. And a man that only had one little lamb. And David sees 
to step out there holding that lamb on that hillside uh, and he sees himself. Uh, oh, God, yeah, I know what you're going. Yeah, huh? I can imagine how he loved him. Uh, he may have some children and they loved that. Oh, yeah, I've seen them. Uh, they only had one. Yeah, oh, my. Uh, what a story. Uh, and David's brought right in. Uh, he may, they said there was a neighbor uh, and he had many lambs uh, and many sheep. Uh, and, but he went down there and stole that one lamb uh, and killed him and ate him. Uh, my God, the Bible said David was wrong. Uh, and said, show me the man that done it. Uh, and I'm going to kill him. Uh, and all of a sudden, there's a finger in his face. Uh, and he said, you are the man. Uh, my God, what's the matter? Uh, and David sits back. I thought, I've got a way. No, uh, I've got some bad news for you, David. Uh, the thing you've done is please the Lord. Uh, and God's not happy with you. Uh, and you're not going to get away. Come on. Uh, and I want to tell somebody tonight, uh, God's are watching you. Uh, I don't have to name it. Uh, I don't have to go down the list. Uh, I don't have to tell you all about it. Uh, but I want to know tonight. Uh, do your ways. Uh, please, God, tonight. Uh, whoa. Oh, I'm all here now. David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. He said to Nathan, As the Lord liveth, this man had done this thing shall die. You know, it's amazing how righteously indignant we can get at people that's doing, only doing the exact same things that we're doing, but we don't see ourselves. Huh? You ever know somebody's ready to set the world straight, but they haven't got their own self straight yet? Are y'all here tonight? Come on now. They're ready to tell everybody else how to live, but they didn't know how to live themselves. Uh, oh, help me, Holy Ghost, tonight. Uh, I want to ask you tonight, is the way you're talking pleasing to the Lord? Uh, is the way you're walking pleasing to the Lord? Uh, oh, come on. Uh, is the way you're living pleasing to the Lord tonight? I can't be your judge. Uh, I can't make you live right. Uh, I can't make you talk right. Uh, I can't make you worse. I can't make you do it, but there's a God that's watching you tonight uh, that holds your very breath in His hand. Uh, I got to reading about this uh, and the the Bible said he shall restore the lamb fourfold uh, because he did this thing and because he had no pity. Uh, and Nathan said, Thou art the man. Uh, amen. I gave you thy master's house. Uh, oh, this stirred my heart today. I hope I can preach a little while. Uh, and, thy, and thy master's wives into thy bosom. Uh, I gave you the house of Israel and of Judah. Uh, and if that had been too little, uh, I would have moreover given unto thee such and such things. Uh, my God, he said, David, what more should I do for you? Uh, I gave you the kingdom. Uh, I've gave you victory throughout the land. I mean, I've gave you everything. If that hadn't been enough, I'd have gave you more. But you still have up on that one sin. You still don't come on now. I want to tell you, you can sit in a corner and you can cry about somebody doing your own. But I'm going to tell you, you look at God. You can't never say God's done your own. You can't never say God's turned against you. You can't never say that He ain't never done me nothing but good in this place tonight. And the preacher pointed his finger in David's face uh, and he said you are the man uh, and God's give you everything uh, but it was not enough uh, to satisfy your heart amen Whew. I'm all here you got houses you got lands you got cars you got this you got that hey man is that not enough he said if that wasn't enough I'd give you more oh but I want you to know David I'm disappointed in you I want you to oh come on and I want to tell you, God disappointed in somebody in this place tonight. Hey, Amen. God blessed you with the Holy Ghost. God touched you. God moved. What has God given you? Hey, Amen. And there's some things in your life that displease the Lord tonight. You've took on some things that you laid aside. You went back to some things that God did. Wait a minute. God said, I set you free from that. I gave you the victory from that. At an altar, I told God, you told me you'd never do that again. And now you're going back. But more than going back, you're making excuses. And you're pointing fingers all there, a bunch of hypocrites. Uh, they're this and they're that and you're pointing fingers at everybody else like David did uh, but you need to turn it back around and point it right here uh, because you're the one uh, amen God's not going to judge you by what everybody else does uh, and God's not going to judge you by how everybody else lives uh, and God's not going to judge us uh, by whether they're right or wrong uh, but God is going to judge us whether our ways uh, please the Lord tonight uh, somebody lift your hands and ask God to help us uh, whoo Hey man, I'm not going to give an account. I will not give an account for Nathan. I will not give an account for Brother Shane. I will not give... Come on here now. Oh, I wish I could preach a little while. Hey man, I want to preach to you that you have got to make sure that your ways please the Lord. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. I said you have got to make sure that your ways please the Lord tonight. You 
okay? Hey, Dougie, you don't have to look very far to find a hypocrite. And there's a lot of people that think they're going to stand before God and say, well, bless God, I knew this guy said he was saved and he was a hypocrite. You know how much water that's going to hold with God? Are y'all here? And that don't mean three. That means zero. Huh? Oh, thank you for helping me preach tonight. I said, dude, that ain't going well, Brother Bernard, I knew some people said they saved shouts, spoke in tongues, and ran carried on, and they was this and they was that. Well, that ought not to be, and that don't make them right, but I'm going to tell you something. When you and I stand before God, He be going to say, did your ways please me? God, I want to tell you about that hypocrite. I don't care about that hypocrite. I, I bless you. I, I gave you a wife. I gave you a husband. I gave you a child. I gave you this. I gave you health. I gave you my touch. I gave you my love. But that hadn't been enough. I, I'd have gave you more. I, I don't want you to use excuses. I, I don't know why you did what you did. I, I don't know why you turned your back on me. I, I don't know why you went back when I brought you out of the mighty clay. I, I don't know why you turned back to the wicked back of the elements of this world. I, I don't know why you allowed your friends I, to take you away from me. I, I I don't know why you lost your family uh, to drag you out of my house. Uh, uh, God, I don't want God uh, to be displeased uh, with my life tonight. Uh, whew. I ain't going to hold you much longer here. Oh, man, I want to when a man's ways please the Lord. And the Bible said, I got some more news for you, David. The sword will never depart. From my house. Are y'all here? Can I preach you about five more minutes? Trying to help you, not trying to hurt you tonight. I'm asking you a question. Somebody ask yourself, is God pleased with me? Y'all, y'all ain't talking to me tonight. I said, somebody ask yourself, is God pleased with me? Am I doing all that I can do. Brother Ryan said something that's been on my heart lately. I thought just this week, Brother Ryan, and I appreciate you preachers getting there exhorting and saying, y'all feel your liberty to exhort and you got wisdom, you know when God's in it, go with it. Preach a while. Amen. Exercise your gifts. And I plan to use you as the years and the days progress on. Amen. You're going to have to be used in this church and we're going to have ministries and preach here. You know, we're not going to sit there idle. I, I promise you that. Hey, we get this groundwork laid. i got plans. I want to use you and I appreciate you. But Brother Ryan was talking tonight. He talked about the Muslims. And bless God, Brother Brent, I just can't live without my pants. The Muslims are wearing turbans over their heads. Their women walk out with little slits that let their eyes see out. And robes that drag the ground. Their dresses must drag the ground. Come on. And I tell you, brother, I just can't. What do you mean you can't? You can. You just don't want to please the Lord bad enough. You just ain't realizing how serious this thing is. I tell you, brother, brother, I tell you, I just gotta, I just got to have, hey man, my country music. Oh, you don't. How when the Taliban ruled in, in that, they didn't even allow to have radios, televisions. You say, oh, I just can't live without it. What do you mean? People that don't even know Jesus ain't never been washing their bloods living without them. Come on here now. I tell you, brother, brother, I just can't live without my sports. What do you mean you can't live without them? Millions of the people in this world live without sports. Hello, y'all here? Well, baby, I, tell you, I just don't think it's the greatest thing. I just don't, I don't, hey, quit making excuses and ask yourself tonight, do my ways, please the Lord. Come on here. I talked to a pastor last night, uh, and he's got a brother that's got a problem with two things, uh, his television and paying tithes. Uh, hey, many, he can eat at that, 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 the area this preacher's from, believe it or not. There's some big non-tithing areas uh, in this country. They live homeless, they shout around, but they don't believe in paying tithes. And they're trying to tell you, well, we give more than 10%, we give more than well, that. Anyway, I'm not here to split hairs. But you need to pay your tithes. If your heart's right, you're going to pay your tithes. As simple as that. If you ain't saved, you ain't saved. And this so every time that this preacher preaches on tithes, and it's his brother, he'll come stomping up that aisle, get him on the pulpit, and just lay it to him. Hey, man, you know you're picking on me. You know, you know I got a TV. You know I got a TV. He said, Well, you know that I'm against him. He said, You know that I don't watch nothing but the news and sports. Hey, man, I'm a Kentucky basketball team. Hey, man, he said, Well, why are you getting so aggravated? Hey, man, he said, I'm sorry. He said, I know you may not watch all that much. He said, but it ain't good for you and especially ain't good for your grandkids. It ain't good for your family members that you're leading astray. Come on here now. I'm going to tell every man that sits in this place. We got ten, five or ten little boys running around here and they're going to pick up on what you how you talk and how you walk and the things you do. We're going to see what that brother does and I can do it. Oh, come on. And what you may be able to control, they may not be able to control. So I got a question tonight. Are your ways and the example that you're setting does it please the Lord tonight? I said the example that you are setting does it please the Lord?
got some bad news for you. Your ways don't please me, David. The first thing that's going to happen to you is your sword is never going to depart from your house. Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord? I got to reading this today and I got to thinking about David. You know, David did not have the New Testament. But he had the law. Brother Ryan, he had the Ten Commandments. And the Bible said, how many know, can name me off, name me off three commandments that David broke, somebody. Huh? Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Come on here now. Don't covet. Now he coveted his neighbor's wife. Come on here. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. He stole his neighbor's wife. Come on here now. Are you understanding what I'm preaching? Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not commit adultery. He, shall... he broke many of the commandments. And when the prophet got there, he didn't get there and say, why didn't you do what I told you to do? I... He said, how come you've done this evil and, and not follow the commandments of God? I tell you, there's people here tonight and God's dealt with you about things in your life and you've prayed through them and you've done better. Hey man, I didn't tell you to do them. I didn't make you do them. I wasn't nowhere around. But God dealt with you. And maybe God used being a message or something. You, know, you, you, God spoke to your heart. And God said, you got to do better. And God said, you got, hey, uh, hey man, and God gave you a command and God gave you a word. Uh, hey man, and now we find here, uh, now why hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord uh, to do evil in his sight? You've killed your out of Hittite uh, with the sword. Lord, you've taken his wife to be thy wife, and you've slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. You've allowed the man to die at the hands of the enemy. Amen. And not only that, you're happy about it. And you think you're getting away with it. But oh, there's a God in heaven. And he's got a little PS for you. Amen. The thing that you've done has displeased the Lord. Well, I can't afford for God to be angry with me tonight. I said, I can't afford for God to be displeased with me tonight. I'm fixing the clothes. Let's keep our minds upon the Lord. The sword will never leave your house. I'll raise up evil against thy own. You're going to reap what you sow. I'm going to take your wives before thine eyes and give them to thy neighbor. He shall lie with the wise in the sight with thy wives in the sight of the son. You did it secretly, but I'm going to do it before all of Israel. And David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord also hath put away thy sins. Thou shalt not die. However, because you've done this deed, you've given occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. The child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. Oh, when your ways don't please the Lord, it's going to cost you something. Oh, I love you tonight. I said, when our ways don't please the Lord, it's going to cost us something. I'm trying to be very cautious. And y'all forgive me. And again, I'm just human. I, I'm trying to preach and not always make our whole service our mind about where we come from. But in the midst of all of this, and as I prayed about starting this church, and again, I told you about my nuggets from Sister Falcher. I laid on my face on the carpet. Sister Falcher told me, she said, Get low. Get very low before bread, before God, brother Brett. And I took that advice, and I said, God, I don't know what else to do. I don't know where else to turn. And God, I am not trying to get out of Your will. I'm not trying to be out of Your will. God, if I don't do this just right, please forgive my soul, because You know that I want to please You. Oh, come on. Brother Shane, I've tried to get down and say, God, I don't know exactly what to do. I don't know exactly how to do it. God, I don't know how to handle this situation. But please, I'm not trying to sin. I'm not trying to... I wanted God to know that I didn't want to displease Him in any way. Oh, help me, God. Oh, I said I didn't want to displease Him in any way. I've got to have the Lord's favor. If we're going to do anything here, we must have God's approval on the road. We must have God's stamp of approval. And if we don't, let's just go join a charismatic church somewhere and find ourselves a place to sit. I want to tell you, young people, listen to me now. You children, look up here and listen. You need to live a life that pleases the Lord. You need to live, you need to talk in a way that pleases God. You need to walk in a way that pleases God. You young ladies need to dress in a way that pleases the Lord. Thank God you need to do everything you can to obtain the favor of God in your life tonight. Stand to your
your feet all over the house. Hallelujah. 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 Whew. Amen. I want to ask you a question. Is God pleased with you tonight? I want to ask you a question. Where does God fit in in your life? Is God an afterthought in your life? Is God a second thought in your life? Is God a fourth place, fifth place? A... Where is God in your life? Where does God's will fit out in your life, in your order of importance? Oh, brother Brent, I need to do this. I need to do that. I need to. I read today where the Bible said, Whereas we know not well, what, what will be on the morrow, life is a vapor that appears, James, for a little while, James 1, it appears for a little while and then advance away. He said, And whereas we don't know what tomorrow is going to hold, and I'm paraphrasing, we ought to say, If the Lord will. You ever heard someone say, If the Lord's willing? That come out of James. He said, Whereas we ought to say, If the Lord wills. I will. If the Lord doesn't, I won't. If He wants me to, I am. If He doesn't want to, I'm not. Come on here. I want to please the Lord. Maybe in your life tonight, God's dealing with you about issues. Maybe in your life tonight, God's speaking to your heart about things. Maybe in your heart, oh, come on here now. He's been dealing with people in this service tonight. People don't always like the convicting power of God. That's okay. It doesn't matter. I'm glad when God speaks to me. Come on. I've been in some meetings before and God got on my hide and got on my... Hey, I said, thank you, Lord, for loving me enough to speak to my heart. One of man's ways, please, God. The Bible said He built the earth and He saw it and it was good. He built the land and He saw it. It was good. He did this. He did that. It was good. He did it. You know, when God looks at me, are y'all following? Am I, do I preach all right there? When Brother Ryan, when God looks at Haven of Hope, I want him to say, it's good. When he looks at your marriage, I want him to say, it's good. When he looks at me and my wife and our home, I want him to say, it's good. I'm pleased with their life. I'm pleased with their sacrifice. I'm pleased with their... De- Come on here now. And I told you the other night, I... I told you when David went before God, I preached on some things I cannot live without. And David said, Lord, you don't desire a burnt offering and sacrifice. Or else I would give it. You don't want a thousand rams. You don't want a thousand turtle doves. You want the sacrifice of a broken and a contrite spirit. And I'm going to tell you, say, oh, Brother Brent, I'll do this. I'll give this money or I'll, I'll, I'll play the instrument or, or I'll sing. Or, and, and all that's good. We got to do all. It takes all of us working together. But I would say, God says, I tell you what I want. I want some time with you, Amen. When nobody else is around, huh? I want you to lay aside some of these personal convictions that Brother Ryan talked to us about. I want you to lay aside some things. I want you to give up some things. I want you to get more serious about your Christian walk. I, well, no, let me do this, God. I got to, I'll give some sacrifices over here. Dave, God, David said, God, I give you a thousand rams. Wouldn't, it wouldn't make a, a blip on my radar. A millionaire. I got thousands and tens and hundreds of thousands of rams. A thousand rams. Come on here now. Yeah, this one. But no, he said, that's not what you want. What you want's going to please you, God. Uh, is when I fall down on my face. Uh, and I begin to weep and cry. Uh, and I show you a broken and a contrite spirit. When I come into your house, the Bible said he inhabits uh, the praises of his people. Uh, I wonder tonight how close God got to some of you. Uh, with the lack of praise. Uh, with the lack of burden. Uh, with the lack of tears that fall down your face. Uh, the lack of respect you showed while he was in this place. Uh, not one tear. Not hardly upraised tail without being. Come on now. Uh, I'll tell you, that's doesn't please the Lord. Uh, when we don't worship him in spirit and in truth. Uh, when we don't give him our all. Uh, when we don't push with everything that is within us. Is God pleased with you tonight? I'm asking you a question. So get ready to come and pray. My question for you tonight, is there anything in your life tonight that means more to you than God does? He said, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Is there anything tonight that you get more excited about than Him and His presence and His ways. Is there anything in your life that excited you more tonight than His visitation in this service? And if there is, I don't
don't think it pleases him. I get excited. I like to hunt. I enjoy hunting. But I'm telling you the day that I get more excited about hunting than I do coming to God's house is the day I need to ask God to help me. Because that's not pleasing to Him. Hunting's not a sin. It's not a sin at all. Come on here now. But I wonder sometimes when we got time to go do this, do that. Basketball's not a sin. These things of shopping's not a sin. But oh, when we got time, we're so excited. We run and we squeal. And my wife gets so excited over $10 office that comes out of a stupid computer. Drives me nuts. Uh, hey man, just get so excited. Get 10% off. Uh, 10%. And you know what? She don't even know that they know that if they give her that coupon, she'll come buy something. And if they don't, she wouldn't even think about going. But it makes her think, i got to go. It's going to expire. Come on here. Y'all here. And, she get, and that's not a sin to get excited about 10% off. It excites me to save a little money. Hey, but I'm going to tell you something. I don't want to get more excited about a sale, hunting, fishing, anything in this world, whether it be a sin or not. If we're more excited and we're more wrapped up about our job or anything in this world than we are about the things of God. Do you think that pleases Him tonight? Is the Lord pleased with you? Oh, come on. I know I've been preaching some messages of challenges. I'm not here to beat you down. I- I've tried to preach some encouragement. But we must be challenged tonight. We must be stirred in our hearts. That, well, we can, we can pat ourselves on the back any time. But I want God to challenge us to draw us near. The altars are open tonight. Let's come seek His face and ask God to help us. Let's ask God that our ways would please Him in this service tonight. Come on, boys. Let's pray. Young men, let's seek God. Dads, moms, brothers, cousins, aunts, friends, uncles. Let's seek the face of God in this place tonight. Let's ask Him that our ways would please Him tonight. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, come on tonight. Come on tonight, come on tonight. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, glory. Come on, church. Seek the face of God tonight. Oh, come on, young boys. Let's seek the face of God. Do our ways please Him tonight. Oh, I said, do our ways please the Lord tonight. Uh, have we surrendered all? I said, have we surrendered all tonight? Uh, oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Oh, come on. Seek His face. Seek His face tonight. Seek His face. Come on, boys. Let's pray a while. Come on, boys. Come on, young men. Let's seek the face of God. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Pray it, Sister Kara. Sing, let the Lord use you tonight. Come on, let's seek His face a while tonight. I said, let's seek His face a while tonight around these altars. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Sing, Sister Kara. Obey the Lord. Hallelujah. Tonight, too much looking around. Let begin to seek His face tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You know the chorus starts singing. In His will, in every way, to be lost in His presence, found in His likeness, to hear Him say.
Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Oh, I'm going to please the Lord. Be in His will in every way. And to be lost in His presence. Found in His likeness. To hear Him say, well done. Oh, I just want to please the Lord. Be in His will in every way. To be lost in His presence. Found in His likeness. To hear Him say, well done. Someday there are trophies to be won, success is there to claim, and some would give their very soul to reach its highest plane, but to count again would be mock. If I lay down, commitments cross, so I lift my eyes to things above. And serve her with a heart of love. Oh, I just want to please the Lord. Be in His will in every way. To be lost in His presence. Found in His likeness. To hear Him say. Someday. 
kiss a hand of delight. I could not be pacified for my heart of empty break inside. Through Jesus showed himself to me and said, just look where you could be. Commitments cross, so I lift my eyes to things above. 